common gym freedom appearing right over there. I just wanted to tell you, I was kind of excited to tell you about this. Uh, my mom talked to me this morning and said she had a dream about you last night. She said it was really weird. She said, you know, she's watched a few of your shows, so she thinks that's why it was. But she said what was weird about it was I wasn't there. My dad wasn't there. Nobody else she knew was there. She said the world was just burning and there were buildings falling down everywhere. And she got trapped into one of these buildings and she felt scared and it was horrible until all of a sudden Adam was standing above her, reaching down saying, please let me help you out of here. And she was so relieved and you grabbed her out. Right. But there was another guy there next to her and he said, come on, let's go. And the guy literally says, no, I don't believe in you like that. And you mm -hmm. said, I don't care. You're a human being. Get out of here. And you end up helping him out. And like you were running around frantically pulling people out of these buildings as they're falling and stuff. And she said that was that was pretty much the end of the dream. She didn't know why, but like she felt better. And you were out there oh. just pulling people out of the rubble. I was like, man, that's symbolic on a lot of levels. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Wow. Thanks for sharing that, Jim. And, and tell your mom, thank you. She wants to write that up somehow. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to share it. And, I, you know, I, I'm I'm honored, in, in, you know, in to be to be you know, in someone's psyche and, and recognized as someone, I, you know, I, this is like, you're, you're tempting me with a savior complex here, right? You know, like, yeah, that's I, kind of but, dangerous. what's that? I, I said, yeah, that's kind of a dangerous line to walk, but I think, yeah, I think you can handle it. Well, no, I, 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 oh, I know I can, cause I don't, I don't have any delusions uh, about what's going on in the world or what's possible or my own potential role in it or, or, or what makes me special as someone who's got, you know, a certain history and has figured out certain things and can articulate that in a way to show the way forward in this one dimension of the human experience that I think is most important. But th this analogy in the dream, pulling people out of collapsing buildings. I mean, wow. Like that's, I, I and right away I want to say like I'm not special. It's not like hey Adam versus like right away obviously interpreting the metaphor. Uh, there's you know maybe that was her vision from where she was because she saw me as the one pulling her out. I would just immediately say there's an army of us first responders, and I've used the analogy of you know, a doctor with an accident on the side of the road, right? Like if, if you, th that's what it's, it's like to be a libertarian. And it, it's not a perfect analogy, obviously. And I use this to say like, man, be more involved, right? Like if I, cause, cause the, the, the analogy that I used to use in like all of my, you know, a lot of tour speeches was if you're a doctor and you, you, you come on an accident on the side of the road and there's a dozen people bleeding out, bleeding to death, like slowly bleeding to death or dying from traumatic injury. And if you jump in and you go and you put hands on and you, you start, you know, saving people, you might save one or two, but the rest are going to die. But if you instead you go to traffic, you go, you go into the road, you say, hey, I need help. I need more hands. I can't do this on my own. I, 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 you don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to be a trained professional. You just need hands and go and, and put hands on these people who are bleeding and stop the bleeding and less people will die if we as libertarians are able to recruit more people to the cause and to become repeaters of this message. And that's a little morbid. It's a little narrow, right? It, it has some, there's, it, it's, it's certainly, I think, effective. It's effective for me to be like, yeah, if, you know, inherently being a good Samaritan. And, you know, Jim, we haven't done any tours together yet, but uh, for people like Eden and, and Zach Foster and uh, people who have gone on tours with me before, they know that when you're on the road that much, you see accident. And I'm a first responder. And I mean that in, in the most direct sense of the word, not like a professional or technical sense i'm not you know professional i'm not you paid first I'm, you're gonna respond exactly 
And I have, you know, I, I have tended to people next to dying bodies. I have helped people, uh, you know, have a smoother transition from their scene of the accident to getting to an ambulance. Uh, I have helped, you, you know, uh, diffuse tense situations to de-escalate conflicts between drivers. And it's just kind of a mentality. This is one thing I, I, I love about the military. And I, I hate to say this, but, and, and it's really not the military itself so much as part of that pure intent that a lot of us join the military with of wanting to serve and wanting to help and saying, well, uh, someone's got to risk their life to, to save people. Well, I'll, I'll do it. Sure, I'll sign up. And in the Marines, and I know in the other branches, although to a lesser extent because they're not as cool, uh, but in the Marines, certainly with all the, the, the teamwork training and you know sense of responsibility for what's going on around you and a sense of awareness and uh you know a good samaritan attitude i mean that's what it is i, mean, I hate to use the the, the christian reference because that's also kind of inadequate but being being a first responder and having that mentality and, and really you know being an activist someone motivated by a deep-seated sense of injustice you see something wrong in the world you want to fix it you see suffering and you want to alleviate it and so you know i'm i think maybe with what i'm doing now it's more articulatable as pulling people out of a collapsing building right now it's it's more clear to say look the the world that you know and right now like it's crumbling i mean man i almost made this today show about the uh the dollar collapse uh that that like you know i we've been watching this we've been following this and going Hey, maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is the time, you know, there's a lot like, anyway, but there are, there are, I mean, you, you obviously Corona, Black Lives Matter, all the economic stuff around both of those uh, manufactured crises right now, the failures in infrastructure that are, you know, just starting. Well, I shouldn't say just starting. I mean, we had, uh, the food supply chain kind of uh, started to scare people when you, when they saw, you know, thousands of tons of onions rotting on the side of the road because it was no longer profitable to move them anywhere. And you're like, whoa. And, and you know, nobody's starving. But, you know, there's there have been some glitches in the matrix. Yeah. You know, is the system collapsing? Is it a is it a building falling down that you want to be pulled from? I mean, in a sense, yeah, obviously it's more metaphorical in terms of what I what my pinned tweet says right now, right? I'm leading the most important march ever for freedom out of the cities and into the woods where there's plenty of freedom to go around. And even that's not entirely literal. You know, it's not go from a city to to a forest it's go from an unconscientious thoughtless mainstream dictated for you laid out by expectations and social pressures and bullying and expectation and all of the social engineers who want you to be conditioned to be a good little cog in the machine kind of lifestyle versus a fully conscientious lifestyle where you reconsider everything from the ground up based on your values, based on what you want to do to live a better life. And in terms of homesteading or reconsidering your living situation, that doesn't necessarily mean live, leaving a city. I mean, I'm trying to think of a good exception. You know, I mean, if you have an urban garden plot or you're able to live in a city where you, you don't have to pay taxes that contribute to the evil of the state and you're able to, you know, do you know you have the space to do these things that you can't do living in an apartment, probably, right? Although you can get most of the way there and still I mean he's right. You can, like it, and, and I don't suggest any absolutism here, like to become a yogi on a hill or some kind of Buddhist monk ascetic or something like that. Uh, it's a matter of degrees and, 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 you know, conscientiousness, but you cannot live in an apartment in a city and not pay taxes that end up contributing 
to the military industrial complex, to the surveillance state, to the police state, to all the greatest evils of government. You're going to pay rent. It's going to be on paper. You're going to pay for utilities. It's going to be probably to a government agency or a government granted monopolistic, whatever privileged company. You're going to pay regular, you're going to pay for all of the privileges of, of that city government in city taxes one way or another. And you can opt out of a lot of that. You can live in a city and work under the table, for example. You can at least not pay the income tax. You can convert all of what you earn under the table from U.S. dollars to cryptocurrency or metals right away and at least, uh, you know, not be paying uh, the inflation tax that way. There are a lot of things you can do, but really, yeah, out of the cities into the woods does kind of sum it up. Out of the collapsing building to safety, right? Yeah. Yeah, seems legit. That's a good metaphor, I think. It's you explained it pretty well, but yeah, that's the that's the idea. I I, I could say as you were thinking uh, when you were talking about the part of uh, getting other people to help you at the crash site, I was thinking, well, where was I in this dream? Uh, I think I was visiting my daughter and her mother, and I was saving them out of their buildings on that part. Yes. Of it. Yes. <laughs> I was yes, in another no. part of the world saving somebody else. So you had to, uh, I, I really appreciate you looking after my mom. Though. <laughs> oh, well, someone's got, hey, as long as I don't have any kids, I got to pull out. I mean, I, you know, I'm already at, we're, we here at the Garden of Freedom are about as far out of that collapsing building of society as you could possibly get. Uh, I mean, yeah, you go to Antarctica, right, well, uh, well, to be fair, the United, you want, oh man, you really want to pick apart this metaphor, see how it applies. You know, we're we're still in the United States for now, although soon we will be a sovereign nation here at, with with our ten acres as a as a micro nation. And uh, but but even then, you know, we're going to be surrounded by the United States territory, and may, maybe you know, and and maybe this is uh, this should be our contest for today. Again, for our, maybe this is, uh, this is like almost excluding our domestic listeners. Actually, they're all foreign if, if, if we're sovereign, but we're not yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to say, like, what's, what's the, you know, is America as, as the, like, you know, the, the, you know, we, we've, I've talked about this before, like, you know, America has the, the, the seat of the empire of, of the power today. And that you know it's the dollar empire, and that as as U.S. citizens, you have certain privileges, and, and you are a kind of protected class in in the general government racket, where you profit as a, as a citizen from the exploitation of other countries around the world through the U.S. government and foreign policy, corporatism, especially free free trade deals you know, and obviously negotiated government managed trade deals to favor some at the expense of others uh but yeah is, is you know well what about china china is also a significant you know, empire if, if you will um now hong kong the uyghurs tibet the South China Sea, all you know, all of these things. That you say, well, it's it's China. Well, is Tibet really part of China? You know, isn't that a distinct sort of national identity? Maybe we we'll go back to the United States. Well, what about Florida? Florida man, those people are definitely different than the rest of us. And you know, if they want to be their own country, like I'm, I'm okay with that. California, the Cal Exit movement, right? Texas, the Great Republic of Texas. Steers and queers. Yeah, you can have your own country. Uh, <clears throat> I'll have mine here, too. I'm, I'm, everybody should have their own country if they want and be able to create new ones. That's the idea with, with this.